All right, hi everyone, welcome to my channel, and I am so glad to be back with you. And the last time we had today's guest on, we left off with kind of like a special bracha that we should be <laughs> together recording this, and in here, Eric Israel. And Hashem loves us so much that he completed one of the two requests, which is he brought us together live. So here live with me is Rabbani uh, Kinneret Sarah Cohen with us to, to share a, a tremendously interesting topic. Um, but I want to welcome you. I can't you. believe Hashem heard us. I know, right? <laughs> here, and he, he acted quickly. I mean, we just did the last show, and right. we were just saying that we should do the next one together live. live. We wanted it to be in, <laughs> in Eretz Israel. Yeah. It couldn't happen for now. Listen, Hashem, it's not quite the time, but he said, listen, I love you guys so much. I'm going to bring you together anyway yes, to do it live. all the way. <laughs> and listen, I think, you had the, uh, I think you had the bigger journey between the two of us. You know, yes. an hour and a half is not as bad as as long as you yes, had. But yes. you are here here in Brooklyn uh, so tell us what you're up to in Brooklyn okay well uh, in general whenever I come back and I, I've been trying to come back every like two and a half three months um, in order to continue the good work that I do uh, with Hashem's help right um, we've had so far I've had three shiurim oh, and one um, one huge event for Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, well, and all the time Omer that came, just well, passed, actually, yes. this year we decided to um, to do something different than every other year, and we decided to not put all of the emphasis on Rabbi Shimon, right. but actually centered around everyone that was had something to do, do. with his life, right. who was also uh, a great individual, whether it was Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair, yes. who was his father-in-law, or his Rebbe, Rabbi Akiva, right. all his colleagues, right. you know, spiritual colleagues. So we really just devoted that night to every single Tana. Uh, we sold bottles of oil where that I took oh, to, to the Kivayt Sadiqim yes. in order to raise money yes, for all yes. Sara. So that was that event. I had a shear in Tinek. I had another one in Brooklyn. And Baruch Hashem. I'm just so the, glad Hashem made time. Busy. Yes, yeah, and he, he yeah. made time for us to get together. Yes. Um, you know, it's funny. We're talking today about a very interesting topic. And I feel like you and I are kind of shared to talk about this because we've kind of had this have we met before? And this whole topic of Gilgul, and you know, it's funny, sometimes you meet somebody and you feel an instant connection, and you feel like, I feel like I've known you in a past life, and I can go so deep into any topic with you because I feel like there's this connection yes. here. And I want to talk today, I think this topic fascinates a lot of people, sure. um, and sometimes it's for the good, and sometimes it's not for the good. And I want to talk a little bit more about this whole concept of Gilgul about these connections that we feel and how do we use them to kind of fulfill the mission we have in this lifetime? Well, first of all, it's an amazing topic in general and quite a complex one. Yes. Because yes. Uh, uh, things, uh, the way Hashem works is that everything is intricately woven um, into a masterpiece, a right. masterful uh, canvas that we don't see. Right. Um, and Gilgulim especially, you know, you mentioned just now that it could be good and not so good. There's no such thing as uh, Gilgul that it's this is true. Kun, this that is, is not true. good. This is true, because it's all for the good. Even if the outcome seems right, like it wasn't unjust, so pleasant. It wasn't the best <laughs> scenario. <laughs> right. But but the, the chesed that Hashem does in, in uh, when he meets right, you know, when he creates a meeting between two souls that have to um, work together mission. Yeah. yeah to work together now the maybe the, the the not good thing that you're referring to is what Chachamim do say about incomplete tikkun. right meaning Hashem puts you together and he hopes that you complete your tikkun and you do what you need to right. do but if something comes up where one person or the other or the, a group of people right. decide to uh, put an end to that connection, right. then a tikkun is then left Incomplete. kind of in the air, <laughs> and unfortunately, you gotta come back. No, you know, the truth is, the chachamim say either you come back, right, or Hashem then has to create a scenario of all kinds of um, yisurim and other. You know, yeah, let's get the job done the, the right the way, right, so that this tikkun <laughs> is completed. Now it's funny because. 
I grew up in a false religion, and so we were never really taught outwardly about Tikkunim on Gilgul. And so it's very ironic because my very first introduction to this happened at a time where I knew nothing about the subject. It was back in 2002, and I had the strangest encounter that I say really ever in my life. I was going for a haircut in this really bougie part of, of Connecticut in Westport. It was so bougie, the haircut was like $200. Like two, 2002, that's an expensive, that's a, that's an expensive, that's an expensive yeah. haircut. That's you got to get bold and, for and that, that And that's to show you just where I was, like in the Geshmiut of life, pursuing, you know, it was a totally different life. And so I go into this salon, which you could tell there's a reason why they're charging $200 a haircut because they have like all these grand chandeliers. And right, right. So I go in and there's this grand foyer with a staircase big chandelier and this is guy and there's a light on the bottom and it looks like what I thought was the lobby of the haircut place so I go down and he's staring at me but with this look of like fascination it was the weirdest look he had on his face and I said hi hi I'm here for for my appointment and he goes you know you were a great warrior for for God and and, uh, and I said Oh yeah, I love God. Like you know, right? I'm like, but then I'm looking at him. And I'm like, okay, I just want to get to my haircut. Right? You know? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Like you know, maybe they're charging by the minute. I don't know. You know. So he he goes, uh, he goes, not in this life, in another life. And I said, okay, I'm here for my appointment. And he's just, he just points upstairs. So I missed the whole salon totally and went to a totally different place. And so I said, okay, thank you. And he keeps looking at me with this like fascination in his face. And when I go back to, when I go upstairs to, to the actual lobby, I said, I'm here for my appointment. You know, I, I turn around, the light is off, the guy is gone. I sit in the chair and, and the guy in my hair says, what, what's, what's wrong? You look a little flustered. So I told him I just met this guy downstairs and he just said like this weird, you know, past life kind of comment. And he said, guy where and so i said downstairs and he goes there's not supposed to be anybody down there it's empty it's totally empty so it's funny because he he went and got the manager because they're thinking there's some random guy yeah, yeah. right in the in the salon and so he goes he they asked the the receptionist did you see any guy come he said no i saw her go down and i saw her come up but i never saw a guy come down wow. or and a guy go up wow so i figured oh my gosh this was like and i tucked it away and never and that was my first introduction to past life because i had never wow. had like such a and so it stood in the back of my head and it wasn't until i came back to clyde's world that i started to hear this concept of past life and i always go back to that first encounter when some strange man was telling me that in a past life I was a big warrior for God. So I thought this was very fascinating. It's always piqued my interest. But there are these times where you meet somebody and you feel all this chemistry. And it could be, um, you know, whether, and it doesn't matter, man, woman, boss, you know, yeah. store clerk. Correct. There's something that sometimes it, like, it, it tethers you guys together. And it is some, uh, almost like there is something that you guys have to do. Right. Now, ironically enough, when I met you, I think Hashem kind of revealed that kind of swiftly. <laughs> and Baruch Hashem, I really feel like he's been kind of not, a, not only helping us work together to complete the tikkun that we obviously have together, but I think that he's really blossoming. Uh, you know, we have this job to do together, and he's been making it just so pleasant. I think, at least in my, my end, it's been such a pleasant experience. It's a mutual experience. <laughs> it's a mutual. And I pray that Mr. Hashem, it grows, grows, and grows, and that we are mm -hmm. successful in, in finishing what that is. Um, so tell us a little bit more about what Chachamin tell us, what should we should be doing about uh, when we see these connections. We don't want to get into the esoteric every time we meet somebody like, I think I knew you in a path. But how do we, in a practical way, take what we're feeling and become aware of it and utilize that to, to help us in our day-to-day -day mission? First of all, that's an excellent question. And, and back to your point about our, our meeting. Um, obviously there is a spiritual mission that we're involved in and in our particular case that's it's a very obvious right one. Uh, it's about bringing people back to the truth to the fold of the adult to make them more aware of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence in the world Correct. how our two kohot anefesh how our particular strengths that right. we were 
born into the world with and also our own private experiences yes. of life yes. <laughs> that got us to this place right because yes. whether yes. whether you were in a different religion right. or I was in the religion right. but not practicing it right. it's still a journey that we both had right. to take in order to get to the place where we are now with our own private tikkunim right. um, and so our meeting and our purpose is very clear and I guess that's the beginning of the answer to your question. Right. There are some Gilgulim uh, where it's quite obvious what the Tikkun is, yeah. um, what the Kesha between those people are. And very interestingly, the Ariya Kadosh, Allah Shalom, in his Sefer, Shah Gilgulim, um, speaks about the nuances right. of how that works. And uh, he explains, and again, we're not going to. This is such a I know, complex you can go, topic, it's got tentacles and it grows out, esoterically right. to keep it as simple as possible, right. which it which it's not, is that he says try to envision a nucleus right. that is divided then into many, 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 many parts. Right. Sometimes many, sometimes split in half <laughs> sometimes into three right but it's split right and then HaKadosh Baruch Hu sends those nitzotot those sparks into the world as part of a nucleus so why because they need to be doing something to complete or rectify something that was incomplete right. or needs to be uh, completed in the lifetime that they're in together now sometimes it could be two people Sometimes it could be a cluster of people, but they all come back together. Right. Meaning there's no such thing as some random person here and Correct. another random person. Correct. There. <laughs> Meaning if it's if it's me and three other people that are in a group, it means we were in a lifetime together previously right. as a cluster. Right. And we had some kind of tikkun then, and we're now completing it now. Um, how does it work? It's quite complex. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, right. <laughs> you know, it's like a soap opera. Now, the thing is like this. In the case of me and you, right. because I think we're very learned and very spiritual, it was easy to detect that there is a yeah, tikkun over here. It, and it was such an obvious yes, one. It yes, really is yes. an obvious and one. Or people who have a spiritual eye right. and an elevated soul have that ability to right away process the information that Hashem is sending them in the right way. So if you meet someone and you have that feeling of, oh, wait a second here, this is, this is not a regular meeting. This is, you're right, this is not this a high is not and a regular high. connection. <laughs> uh, there are things going on here that right. aren't the usual right, and the typical. Right, right. You know that there's a mission here that has to be done. I felt the same way when I met my Rabbanit. Yeah. There was an instant instant pull an instant connection we right away uh, we've been together ever, ever since, since. Um, and very interestingly the first month that I met her she kept calling me and saying you realize this is not normal that I that I feel like I'm connected to you like this it never happened to me like this before <laughs> and I said well I have news for you about right. your name is quite distinct her name is Chava It's not a well, typical name. Yeah, that's name. not a typical name. Not a typical name. I said, and you should know, you of all people who study Shira Shirim in Perek Bet, my pasuk, from my name Kinara, is Keshoshana ben achochim ken raayati ben habanot. Wow. <laughs> because I am the, the rose among the thorns. Right. I said, but you, I'm Pasuk Bet. Right. But you're Aleph. Right. Because the first Pasuk of Shir Shirim Perik Bet is Ani Chavatzelet Hasharon Shoshanat Ha'amakim. And then, and then it says, Keshoshana Ben Achochim Ken Ra'ayati Ben Abanot. I said, so your name and my name are one Pasuk right next right. to the other. That's very special. Shira Shirim. Yeah. I said, so we've got some spiritual yeah. thing going on. No, and it's so funny because I think, it was a, I think it was like a, a month ago or something, I sent you a picture of where I want to live in Safat, and it was right by the Kinneret. Yeah, <laughs> you see? <laughs> so, so that's what it is. So if a person has or is open right. to, to explore that connection, 
he will automatically understand what that connection is. Sometimes those connections are a little dangerous, but they, you have to be able to reroute yourself in order to, uh, to, to complete whatever that mission is, which means there are many times, like the Ali talks about a, an incident that happened in his community where um, an orphan who married a girl, okay, um, she died and then somebody else died in the family and it was a whole big mess and they wanted to take away his inheritance from the girl who what the kids are my said the end he paskined that the inheritance belongs to the husband the boy um, even though the family was contesting it and then he told them the whole story he goes you want to know who you all were in a previous Gilgul <laughs> so they're like <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling the story in a very dramatic Hollywood way, but but he, he we pretty like much, that on this yeah, channel. Yeah, pretty much tells them the girl was really a boy in a former life, yeah, and yeah. he was really a girl, and they were actually married in a former life. And as the girl in the as the boy in the former life, he kind of abandoned right the spouse and went for another person and so on and so forth and so a tikkun had to be and he lost a lot of money because of it a dowry was lost and as a result they all had to come back the father the father-in-law <laughs> all the people involved right. in a big mistake that they made right. by relinquishing the kesha between those two right again they literally separated them so in this lifetime as a punishment because they kept giving them problems again the only way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu could submit to this tikkun is by literally taking away the person's life. Wow, yeah. And then the dowry that really belonged to that man who was originally a woman uh, was given to him. Right. Um, so you see here that in such a situation, you see that they were bechal, the opposite genders, married to each other also in the previous lifetime. Um, they didn't treat the, the, that person was not treated right to begin with not then and not now <laughs> not that the Kesha back then was 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 right. uh, relinquished then and it w they tried to do so now and at the end because they did it again Hashem said again you're doing the same thing right, right. again you're trying to put a separation between these two right. again you're trying to take away what's do this person right. in this lifetime and then he had no other choice but to just cause a death. Right. Um, and so we say the danger is tikkunim. And part of the danger is repeating the offenses of the past. Because the whole point of the word tikkun in a gilgul is why are you being bechal mitgalgel? Right. It's because you asked to be mitgalgel and you didn't want to experience the Gehenam, right? So Hashem was merciful with you, Bechal, by bringing you back as a human being. Right. He could have brought you back as anything else. Right. As a domen, right. as a rock. He right. could have brought you on the walls. <laughs> as a leaf. Could, as a leaf, he could have brought you back as a cow. Right. Okay? But he brought you back as a human being in, and put you in the same scenario. Right. With the same difficulty and complexities in order for you to do what? To rise above uh, everything. Right. And not just to complete your own mission in that circle, but to also be metaken, all the fallacies, all the contradictions, all the disturbances of the past that have to be metukanim, dafka because you were megulgal. Right. And if you didn't, and if you repeated the same offenses, right, right. And if you once again relinquish the tikkun because you couldn't handle it or you couldn't see the, the, the fact that, yeah, it is complex. <laughs> and who doesn't have a complex tikkun? Right. And you let it go, then a Baruch who has to redeem the, the gilgul right. somehow, some way. So if it's not going to be together, then something has to happen. Right. And I always pray, look, Hashem, you should ha it should happen with Rachamim. Right. Because I don't want it to happen like it happened with the case of the Ari, that if God forbid, I didn't live up to my part Potential, right. of that tikkun, right. that you would now have to punish me severely in order to compensate. Right. And, and then I would also say, I still doubt until today, there's certain things, you know, with my friends that have happened, and I say, please, I do not want to have to come back 
and be in that same circle yeah, again. I get you. And in the same scenario I get you, again. Because it was hard the and first go time, the right? Same things again and <laughs> right. again. In order, so please, right. uh, if you have to punish me, it should be with a hamim. Right. Exonerate me right. from this somehow, some way, because I'm not willing to go through this right. all over again. And I not. think, I think you know, that comes from, like you said, learning, right? Because you have to learn. There's emunah and bitachon in Hashem, and, and they don't mean the same things. Having faith in Hashem and trusting Hashem, one can have strong emunah in Hashem and not trust Hashem. It's like that wheelbarrow experiment, right? You know Hashem will get to the other side. When Hashem says get in the wheelbarrow, sometimes we have trouble doing that. And it, it, it takes a lot of learning when those situations, like you said, play out where they're not completing the way we had hoped them, or even the way a Kadosh Baruch Hu would have hoped that we had done them, and then it kind of all blows up. And it does, it, it takes a lot of strength to go back to Hashem and say, you know, here are the pieces. What do I do now? Because I want to make this right. I really want to connect to you. Uh, and it's worse. And by the way, I just want to make an interruption and say that both of us, both of us <laughs> made a shahako before, yes, we, yes. Start, before we started recording. Because as I was drinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope they don't think we're make <laughs> We both made a shahako <laughs> before uh, yeah, we started recording. Disclaimer. Okay, disclaimer. Okay. <laughs> You, you spoke about when things blow over yes. and the explosions. Um, yeah, that, that is the, the most difficult part of it all. When you said, Hashem, here are all my pieces. Right. I was supposed to do a tikkun over here. There is a tikkun here that needs to be wrought. There is a gilgul here. What am I going to do now? Right. It's even more difficult when it's not just whole pieces but broken pieces. Right. Sometimes HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you pieces that you have to put together, but then imagine now broken pieces of right. pieces. And now the puzzle has become a lot more complex, complex, a lot more wide and varied, a lot broader, and it's very hard to now take a small piece with all these fractures, with all these fractures of which even if you would piece them together, they probably wouldn't look the same, and that's the danger. There are people that just relinquish that tikkun very, I won't say very quickly because they go through the motions right. um, and I've gone through them I have a friend who I've gone through the motions with her for many years and we just, you know uh, sadly I would have liked to have done it differently in a, in a more um, in a way that Hashem would be proud right. and that person didn't give me that opportunity right. and I do believe that that tikkun hasn't come to an end right. and sadly it hasn't come to an end, at least not in the proper way. There's still tikkunim regarding that relationship that should have been wrought. And I told Hashem, I don't want to come back to deal with that person again. Right. I just, you want to punish me? Right. Take it, take it out on me, her, doesn't matter what. Do it with rachamim, because I'm not going through this right. again. Uh, because the pain was so great. That's what I feel about my life. <laughs> Okay, so the pain was and, so great. And that's why I say, you know, as, as many people on my channel know, like I've been going through years of very tough illness on and off, and thank God Hashem has been so merciful to give me a, a wave of refuah. Um, hence why you see all these videos coming out and all these productions. And, and I really say, like Hashem, I have to get it right this time, because yeah. this was so hard. Yeah. Like from start to finish, Correct. this was like being dragged over those shards right. of a million glass pieces uh, for so many years. So I I can't, uh, it has to be right, right. you know, and, and I, I feel exactly what you're saying. It, you don't want to come back and do this again right. because each time it gets harder. It's right. not, right. you know, it, it gets broken, it's like half, and then it's like you said, three, and then at some point Correct. it becomes shards. Correct. And Correct. it's very difficult. Correct. And I remember that, per that, that specific person uh, writing to me, Erev Rosh Hashanah, which was a disgrace, you know, because, you know, when, when a person does what he does in such a horrible way, and and then leaves it be for all those months, but then suddenly they pop up out of the woodworks <laughs> on an Erev Rosh Hashanah and doesn't even bother to write the words, I am sorry. Right. But, um, but they wrote something to the effect of, it's time to go our own separate ways, um, e even though this old love kiviyacho they were she was trying to say that we have a, a, a past right. time it's not healthy for each of us and i'm like did she just say that because <laughs> because she just write that and just let it go but, and then i tried to call she wouldn't even pick up the phone we have a say for that it's called you know, a backhanded a like backhanded, exactly <laughs> thank you for saying it um but but 
I'm like, I wonder if this person even took the time to even read back right. what they wrote because you know, I think that's are, very important. You know, but no, I'm just saying. It's time to go our own separate ways. And now what? You think this tikkun is over? Right. You think now that you let things go the way you did right. in the most horrible of ways and didn't even let me give me the opportunity to respond. You know, or it's, to, it's so you funny. You think now, okay, that's it. The tikkun is over. Yeah. Uh, that old love was not healthy and we need it's to so go our own separate ways. I don't think so now we went our own separate ways right. and there's no tikkun. And that's I think it. that most people <laughs> never hit that part. No, first we'll of all, do. No. to go back just one, when you said, did they even hear what they said? I think, first of all, Note to self, everyone out there, sometimes before we do something, we pull the trigger, we say something, say it to yourself and let your ears hear what your mouth is saying. <laughs> That's step one, right? And then... And also consider what it would feel like to you if somebody did that to you. Right. And that's the, that's the second part because no one ever gets to the second part of this Correct. is tikkunim. So how can we end this in a way <clears throat> that we don't have to do this again, even if it means that we are not going to be going together in the future? Correct. And I think that you're right. There's a correct way to end certain relationships correct. and say, listen, um, you know, we had an amazing time together. And I think that that journey is now coming to its end. And I want to leave here parting on good terms between us. Well, that would have been the probably the summation of that tikkun. Meaning being able to wish someone well and say goodbye to an old friendship. Right. And an old friendship not just in this lifetime, but in a former, meaning an old relationship. Um, in a way that is worthy, and even more than that, I told my Rabbanit, because my Rabbanit was involved in this, I said, in a way that's worthy of the Geula. Which we're so close to. And that's what I think, I think for myself in particular, and I, and I know that there's got to be other people that feel like that, you know, you feel the Geula so close, and there is this drive to want to do things the right way, so it almost seems like everything should have that extra measure of let me just check this over one more time let me just listen to these words one more time so <laughs> this is such an emotional thing it, it really is it's a it's an emotional thing and you know when things uh just do not go the way that they're supposed to go i think even in that you know we will grow from that yes and you know, and, and you can only hope that the other person, that all parties involved grow from that. Correct. And that we, you know, take that and we take the shard from the darkness and, and put it into the light and help someone else. Um, and it's a tremendous pain. This is obviously something that is very painful. Um, Robinette has feelings too. <laughs> I think sometimes, you know, it's, it's very, people forget. Yeah that you're a human being as well and that, you know, that we all are. We, you know, we do these things and we do them out of love for Kadosh Baruch Hu because we yeah. really do love him and we really do want to do the right thing by him because that's what he's called us to do. And sometimes along the way we get hurt and, and that's a yeah. real... Um, so, there's that aspect of it. Yes, and you should know that, that as painful as it was and it still is Dafka because uh, that tikkun was not brought to its proper mm -hmm. place. Right. And it's like a loss um, of potential there. Like. Correct. That, that's the, you hit it on the nose. But regardless of that, I had a decision to make. Correct. I could either let that person's, her and her whole entire sviva, uh, drag, drag, into the abyss. drag my <laughs> potential down to the dark abyss. <laughs> Um, which could have happened. Right. And my rabbi kept warning me. Yeah. And thank God. Don't you dare let what this person you, did to you and the way this. that they did that make you think for a second yeah. that this is taking away from your tremendous gadlut, from who you are as a person. Because right. I know you. Right. And I know that this person didn't handle things the right way right. no matter what happened or no matter what she says, no matter what her chavra says. You need to rise now above even the potential that Hashem had in mind right. for you. And, and I think this just may have given it the clue to do that. And like the, truth just is, <laughs> the truth is, that's exactly what I did. As painful as it was, and it still is, um, 
I tried to give as many shiurim as possible. Right. I contacted people in order to do tremendous chassadim. Um, I took many, many, many things upon myself. I didn't want there to be in this Gilgul, right. in this Tikkun, a Yerida. Right. Letzorech Aliyah. Right. I wanted just an Aliyah, Letzorech Aliyah. Right. And um, I hope that Hashem has seen all of the efforts that I did in order to at least bring my portion of that tikkun to some fruition. Right. And I even daven for that person and I and I try to ask Hashem to extend himself because obviously if a person does what he does in that way, um, they have to think twice about who they are as a person. Um, and, sad, and and shamefully, some people just never get there. They never get there. Some people. Well, how can get they get there, there when they right. with got the other part of the nucleus? Right, right. right. You know, right. telling them, going back to what former lives. Right. And doing exactly what the Ari said. Right. This cannot happen. You cannot right. have anything to do with them. You know, you're gonna put an X. You can't talk. Right. You can't visit. How can that happen when you've got the same nucleus coming back right. and doing the same thing they did probably in the in the previous? You lifetime. know, it's so funny because on Lagba Omer, I too, like, I ran into an old friend who we were we were really good friends my family and their family prior they were with me in my journey coming forward and, and coming back and then all of a sudden for them i became too religious mm. <laughs> they, yes. they were jews you know we were there and all of a sudden you know it, it, when i was coming back officially it was during the time of the hug of pesach i can't drive anymore on pesach i can't come to your house you know i cannot uh, kiss your husband hello i cannot and all of a sudden this became like a and suddenly that's it. We were through. Wow. No conversation about it. It was literally as if I didn't even exist in the room. And it's been a few years. I mean, it's been a few years already. And you would think that after all this time, maybe time heals, maybe. And this Lagba Omer, I saw them. And again, it was like I was a brick wall. They just kept going as if I didn't exist. So, I mean, I get what you're saying. And it is very painful. And I remember saying, you know, Shem, there, I can only do my part. All right. I know is that, you know. Right. I can only do my part in what is being presented to me at the time, and I just pray that you would give me eyes to see and ears to hear, and you know, and limbs that will go and rush to do what you tell me is the right thing to do. And sometimes it takes some thought. It's not just a, you know, uh, speak out of your mouth. Sometimes it just takes a little silence. You have to take in what's happening. Um, so it is kind of it is kind of um, unhinging sometimes when somebody yes. you do have this love for, and it falls apart and it breaks and it shatters, especially when it was not your intention and you're coming in. Uh, with these intentions to do good and, and to, to have this experience be a positive one and yeah. then it just does not turn out and it's very upsetting and, it, and it's in that moment that you and Hashem are growing closer Correct. through this because Correct. you are now becoming a new version of yourself you've Correct. just been broken in order to fit this new version and hopefully like you said it's going up higher and not sinking down into the abyss right. which thankfully you didn't because there are so many people who really you know we need you out here right yes. <laughs> And that's what, and you should know that uh, a lot of people told me exactly that. We they, need you out they here. Told me, <laughs> they told me, you know what? I mean, they didn't, you know, I tried very hard not to um, share what really went on, um, which I could have in order to defend myself. Right. And I'm sure if I would have, it would have been detrimental to her life. Um, but what what some people realize without even me having to tell them is that something changed in me right they saw that i was something like and look i always considered myself a spiritual person but they saw me like this light all of a sudden they saw a light coming through like where's this coming from i mean you always had it but there's something extra special here that, that something's going on. What's going on? I said nothing. It's called Aliyah Ruchanit. Right. It's called a spiritual elevation that you can only achieve when you're dafka coming from a very, very dark place. Right. It's the ability to be able to, to, to remove yourself from the dark abyss that somebody else put you in right. without a choice and to be able to see your own light not their light, not the light of the tikkun, your own light shining the way through to the other side of the tunnel. And that's really what happened. 
I just, you know, kind of um, took all that light and goodness that I knew existed in me and I pushed everything else aside and I said, I am going to get to the other side right. of the tunnel and I'm not going to do it by, by chas v'shalom having any arida. Like one friend, one person who knew, they're like, oh, please don't take off your kisui rosh and don't, you know, because right. some people, when they, it was such a chilul Hashem, what happened, um, some people re react to that gilgul or that tikkun in a severe way. And I said, what? Uh, no. Yeah. But no, because you know, people do Yerida letzorech aliyah. I said, yeah, that's just an excuse <laughs> right. for them to do what they ultimately want oh to do. Oh my gosh, see, this is what I love, Rabbani. Like, you always just suck it to us. But tell it is it true. I know, but nobody says uh, yeah, this anymore. Yeah, but it's true. It's like, oh, please, just stop with your Yerida letzorech <laughs> aliyah. It's yeah, Yerida letzorech Yerida, and that's the bottom line. Victimhood is hot. It sells like hotcakes these days. No, but that's know? what it is. <laughs> and that's so, whenever you have somebody who says, no, I'm not going, I'm not buying victim. Today. No, no, I'm not in the market not for even, it. It's not even about playing the victim. It's about understanding that that's not right. the way right. to to now deal right. with what went on with right. a tikkun that unfortunately never came to fruition. It's about taking all of your strengths, the kisui, and leave it on in your tail. Right. Enhance it, maybe. Right. Um, it's about taking your tzniyut and doing what bringing it right. to life and talking about Tzniyot and right. b not Afuch and that's what I think people started to see a, a, a very strong desire for me to get to the other side with by, by flashing the light of my own personal redemption and I was so glad that Hashem, in such a time, yes. because you said, what what should be the subject? And of all the subjects I picked. You picked this <laughs> subject. I'm like, what did I tell you? I said, I don't know if we should discuss this. I said it in a very nice way. I, saw, I know. What and did I, I said, tell well, you? I, I said, was here, it's a very you sensitive need, whatever topic. Whatever you need. And, right? and, but Hashem no, put but, it in my mouth. The, Tell the viewers because it's the chef would, listen. I, we we were you know we were. I was just going to come just she for a chose visit. This topic and I didn't want this topic. I said to and is I said to true? Shem, it is. Not much, it is true because I said to a chef, you know, I I want to do a topic and I'm not sure what we should do a chef. And he literally puts this friendship and googling like in my mouth and I'm like, oh wow, I'll see what she thinks about this. And you know, I I picked the topic. And last time you picked the topic, and this time I yeah. picked the topic. Yeah. And I, you know, when I'm listening to all of this, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm so grateful that Hashem thought enough of me to say, you also need to be right where, where the Rabbanit is to help her also as well, and be part of that journey for her to come out. Yeah. So I think that it's just, it really and, is and a as a, And as a side point, you know that I actually uh, did not want to discuss this particular right. topic. I even, I kind of, and you don't even know who we're talking <laughs> no, about. No, I don't. But um, I had said to you in, a, in in that thing, you know, that this is a very sensitive topic right. for me because I went through something this past year and it was very difficult and I wouldn't want it to come up. Right. And somehow Hashem wanted it to come yeah. up through this this subject matter, which I think we should put to rest because we, I think we've exhausted right. that part of it. <laughs> but, um, but I think just the main point is that um, whoever does have the ability with all the difficulties that certain tikkunim do bring to the table like if you put put this friendship aside and take a typical tikkun of a husband and a wife right or a parent and a child you could have or siblings or or friends or whatever it is right but let's take the familial aspect of things what happens when you have a tikkun where you're a parent and your child is nowhere near where you want them to be um, you have that that difficulty between the two of you where you don't click maybe the child is creating a lot of problems in your own life maybe the child is speaking about you in ways that they shouldn't um, babies being a chutzpan and you see that with this particular child right there's a serious tikkun of 
over here. Yeah. Just, I'm not <laughs> clicking with that kid. Everyone else, every other kid, <laughs> right? I don't seem to have such a problem with, but this one right, here, right, right, there, right there. Hashem right. is telling you, ah, you know why? Because that's your tikkun. <laughs> right. That tikkun. You and that child had something in a former life, right. me or that. Maybe the child was your parent, right. and you were something. We don't know, but you right. came back now as parent and child in order to fix that conflict. And why don't you pay attention right. to what the conflict is right. so that you can repair it? Right. That's that. What about a husband and a wife? Same thing there. You have situations where there's a lot of complications in the marriage and you're not understanding why isn't this going to, why am I not getting through to him or her? Why is this happening? Because right there is a tikkun that you need to right. fix that you didn't in a former life. And if you won't fix it, and you won't, you know what? The problem is going to come back in another way or form in this lifetime right. with somebody else. Right. In order for Hashem to show you, hey, repairs still need to be done on that Cadillac over there that you left right. on the side, <laughs> or that Toyota, right. or that thing. And, and, and that, I guess, my message to the viewers is that as difficult and complex as a tikkun might be in a gilgul that's very obvious, we're talking about the obvious, right. okay? when it's obvious to you, you should not relinquish it. You should do whatever you can to learn more about who you are, who that person is, and ask the right questions. Right. And more than anything, I've learned from my own process is that if you're not going to do the work for yourself to know, me ani right. who am I? What did I bring to the table that maybe could have been corrected? Right. What did I bring to the table that wasn't appreciated? Right. Um, and you know, all the questions that need to be asked. How could I have done more? What should I not have done? And what did I do that was not looked right. at in the proper way? Um, and I tell the viewers the same. If you want to achieve a tikkun, it's going to start with your inside. To do the work and to understand that maybe there are things in your own personal uh, personality and your own neshama that need fixing. Right. Um, besides the unit of that Gilgul. And if you're not going to have that self-examination and to actually look in the mirror and say, you know what, I am not right in this, or I am great at that, or I failed at this, um, or, or I was amazing at that, you will never get to the truth of your own tikkun. Right. And you will I, always be living a lie. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of depression starts to sit Correct. in. Because your, your neshama knows, I'm not, it's like, your neshama is like a Ferrari, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times <laughs> we take it out and drive it for a Sunday drive on 20, or we just polish it in the garage mm -hmm. and we never take it out. And so the neshama is like, wait a minute, I'm a Ferrari. I'm a Ferrari. <laughs> I can go really fast and do amazing things, mm -hmm. right? And, but the cost of it is, is, is too, we've got to put a lot into it, which means refining yourself, you know, working on your character traits, that introspection, like you were saying, that takes time and it takes work. You've got to be able to put in the work. And sometimes we just, nope, I'll drive it at 20. Right. And, and, <laughs> I, and, and I had a friend who, that was her, that was her issue. She had a very hard time um, looking into herself and saying the words out loud. Uh, there were many times that say if she would do something, she'd say, I'm sorry for who I am. Well, what does that mean? Right. Who are you? Right. Or, and for um, some people, I feel like that's I'm a crutch. I'm sorry for my being. I feel like but that's a what, crutch sometimes. What, what I, is I feel your like, being? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's uh, almost like what they what say, but there's no gravitas say? behind that. No, there's, there's no, no accountability. Right. It, it's there's so, no self-accountability. Right. So it'll always be, I'm sorry for who I am. I'm sorry for my being. Right. I'm sorry for me. And I, right. What are you trying to say? Right. Who are you? Right. When you say, I'm sorry for who I am, don't be sorry for who you are. So then who are you? Be sorry for what you did and most people can't be sorry for what you just right. didn't do why that it's because the person has a very hard time saying at the end of the day I am this I am that right. I am not this I am not that and it's because psychologically speaking it messes their entire belief system that they built around themselves 
um, which if they would truly analyze it in the proper way, most people wouldn't be able to handle the truth, right? Most people were not strong enough. And, and so what did they do? They repress and they push, right. shove under Nothing the rug. Nothing to see here. No, or at all <laughs> those around them, their same nucleus right. who tell them, you're, you're, you're an great. amazing person. You're such a tzaddik. <laughs> you did the best that you look could. Look at everything you, you look went at every, through. Look, you look at everything that happened. And I, right. it, that's what, what happens. That's what I'm saying. It's Instead like, of just pushing them to therapy, it's like, what I'm get saying. to the core of I mean, what went wrong over right. here. Who you? But that's what I'm saying. Are. It seems like victimhood is just so much easier to sell. And people are really in the market for it because they don't want to push themselves out. Because, I mean, listen, it's one thing you're going through it and then you have to relive it again. It's like ripping that Band-Aid off on a very like open wound. And people have a hard time doing that. Because at that point, it's festered, there's infection, now there's work to be done right. to clean out that wound. Right. And sometimes cleaning it is harder than when you sustained it. Well, that's why my Rabbanit, you know, I like talking to her because she's kind of like me in the sense that she cuts to the chase. Right. You can't was get she born in Brooklyn. No, she was not. <laughs> but she cuts to the chase, and you can't run away. Right. And I remember when, when this whole thing happened, and she was like, "Let's talk about you." Right. What went right and what went wrong right. in you? In you. In you. And it, we got to that place. We got to that place. And that was the healing mechanism. If you're able to look at yourself in the eye. Uh, you know, in, internally, ret um, how do you say, introspectively, and be able to say the words, I was wrong because I did X, X y, y, and Z. Z. Right. And still, at the same time, finish that sentence and say, but I am still such an amazing person right. even though I failed at this. Right, and both things or can be true. I was not enough of X, right. Y, and Z. But I am still such a good-hearted individual. Right. When you have the combination of the two, you can start taking accountability for what that your part, is, right. your part of the failed tikkun was. But if I would say the opposite in this particular Gilgul and tikkun, if I would have said, "You don't know what happened in that in that uh, relationship. Only Hashem knows what right. went on. Right. And if anybody would know, they would have done the same thing." And and only God knows how much I, I I bent myself over backwards. What are you doing? First of all, you're not taking accountability for anything you did. And second of all, what do you do? You right. just shifted the blame right. onto that person, making it seem to everyone right. that that person is the most horrible person right. and you were just the victim right. of the most unhealthy Gilgul. Right. <laughs> really? Okay. Then you have a lot of work to do if that was the response. Right. And I took it the opposite way. I said, w what do I need to deal with that person's Gilgul? Let me right. deal with mine. mine. Let, let, let me see where, where I need to face my own demons. Right. No matter how much Torah I teach, I always tell my students, don't think that because you have this tikkun and gilgul of a righteous person, of climbing up the ladder of spirituality, that you have no faults. Right. Hafuch. Right. The greater you rise in your levels of spirituality, in that tikkun, right. to your heightened levels of potential, the more the Yetzirah is going to be there to help you fall. You. <laughs> Pinching you and saying, no, do, do, do this, do that. And what a potential and you fail. to fall. You could right. fail bad. Right. I'm talking. And it could be worse. Bad. You could fail so badly. If you're so only badly. two rungs up the ladder, there's not too much to That's fall. That's what I'm if saying. You're going really you high up the ladder. in ways that are not even in Catastrophic. the they really picture could be, right. that is you or you would never do such things and you would never go to such places, you would never speak in certain ways or do the things, and I found myself there at some point. Right. And I'm like, oh, I gotta, gotta, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of this. <laughs> this is not my neighborhood. Place. The GPS was saying rerouting. The GPS kept <laughs> telling me reroute, this is not you, reroute, reroute, reroute. And, and that's part of Tikkunim yeah. and Gilgulim. First, you gotta reroute yourself. Yeah. And, and it's not about making that pit stop to go into the, you know, the, the local bar 
are and, and drowning your woes Correct. away, Correct. you know? Correct. And and then there's times like you know, even for myself, there have been times where I feel like, Oh my gosh, I did it, I know. And I remember coming to Clyde's coming back to her college, that was a big one for me. That was a big tikkun for me because that was a lot to come, at least for myself, this mindset. Um, it, it really is like, you know, when you say Ivri, you know, you're coming from this other side and it, the, the work that it took to even change the mindset of that. And I remember feeling the pride of knowing that in this moment, I did it. I closed that circle from a previous life. And there's some moments in your life you really do see that. And there, and again, like there's times where it doesn't go the right way and it still remains in an unclosed circle. And some circles take a really long time. Um, but they do close, and, and that's an amazing feeling. And now with Mashiach on the horizon, we've really got to really got to put in all our efforts to really do the right thing, um, because we may not have another chance to come back. I mean, if you look at the timetable, we're very close. I mean, Mashiach. I mean, we could finish this and not even be able to put it up because Mashiach has been announced that he's here. And and then I'll be going with you to Eretz Israel. You right? better. Play it. I'll, we'll drive. We'll Hopefully, drive. we'll get there before Mashiach comes. We'll if it's not. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, this is an amazing uh, topic, amazing concept. Thank you for being so raw and emotional. Um, and I think it's really good that people do remember um, you have feelings too. Right. Like you have real things that happen to you. Sure. That trouble happens to everyone. It just doesn't happen to the average person. Correct. Um, and, and and that's okay. Things happen and Hashem will still be with you. Right. In the good, in the bad, and this right. too shall pass. Right, right. Um, no, of course, of course, a hundred percent. And and I think that um, all of Qal Yisrael as a unit um, we're that nucleus right. too that's going through a various tikkunim and gilgulim from previous lifetimes. Uh, and even as a nation together. As I'm talking yeah. about, yeah, as a nation where the Ari Alava Shalom talks about it, the Amchal talks about it, of Chaim Vital spoke about it, Alava Shalom, um, Abi Shimon Bar Yochai talks about it a lot in the Zohar Kadosh, right. where you see that even from the beginning of time. Um, I believe the Ari spoke about the fact that all of those people that were failing in the Doha Mabul by, during Noach's time, Hashem didn't just eradicate them from the world. That was one punishment, but He brought them back. He brought them back in the times of Doha Flaga. That's when they built the Tower of Bavel. But there they failed too because they rebelled against Hashem in another way. If it wasn't over here this way, that, so Hashem did what He did, right. and now He brought them back. He kept bringing them back right. in various generations right. until the Ari says until finally they were mitgalgalim uh, right. um, into the neshamot of the Jews in Egypt. Right. And they had to go through serious tikkunim over there, literally in the Kuh Habarzen. Uh, in order to refine them and bring them to a place that was worthy. When they finally, when they, and not everybody survived, yes? Meaning there were many, 80% of Kali Yisrael didn't make that, That's you know, scary. didn't bring That's their tikkun to fruition. Right. Only 20% left. And even out of that. And even out of that, who, made, it, out of that, who made it to, to the finish line because we know that there was Cheta Egel, 3,000 were killed at that point. So you see that Hashem keeps recycling the souls already from the beginning of time um, as clusters right. Right, of Jewish people and sometimes also non Jewish people in order to make the tikkun from where? From way back then, 5,700 That's years That's why I said ago. this was like a. <laughs> So we've got a lot so of baggage. Yeah, we we've got with. a lot of baggage, and unfortunately, as you see, as the generations progress through time, and all of this advancement in technology, um, there are more and more and more nisyonot that don't necessarily enable us to finally make our tikkunim, right. um, because we're so distracted by the falsehood. And we're forgetting that the emet is that we need to make the tikkun. Right. Uh, as a nation, um, as individuals, individuals. As, as partners and whatever our mission may be. And that's the problem. We're, we're constantly distracted by other things or other people who are ve veering us off to various 
paths that are not necessarily right. our tikkun. Right. And sadly, we go with it because whatever it is, you know, you got people say, it's my husband, my husband, my husband, or my children Listen, feel like this. Listen, got a lot of sales right. going on. He's selling a lot of things yes, these days. Yes, my friends, my neighbors, He's got a lot of wares one, at the one. end of the road. <laughs> and sadly, you live, we end up living the tikkunim of other people. Right. And we never fulfill our own. We never complete our own. And I think that's the biggest tragedy. And I wonder sometimes if that's where the mourning is for a lot of us when somebody passes, that our neshama really knows that there is a loss of potential that has happened here. And it's funny because this whole loss of potential, in, a, in private conversations, this has been coming up with certain you know, social aspects, this loss of it. So it's just funny. I just feel like the Hashem is opening more and more of what our tikkun together is. Um, but... It, the potential, that's what this is really all about, reaching the potential that Hashem has put into you, giving you, and it, let me tell you, you have to fight for it. It's not gonna come to you easy. You have no. to fight for it. No. And I think that that people, you know like Shimshong, he said one more time, Hashem, even if I'm going down. He says, Tamut <laughs> nafshi, right. I'm gonna go down, I'm but taking then, you all with I'm me. taking you all with me. <laughs> and I think sometimes there are times in people's lives where they are, they know they've gotten into the wrong place, but they're saying one more time, Hashem, if I'm gonna go out, I'm, I'm going out, and I'm taking everyone with me. And I think sometimes there, there comes a place where people find themselves in that, and they have to break through and just fight all the way to the top. And who knows, it's probably in that moment that you are saved and everything, you know. So this is a, a tremendous, like you said, it's such a complicated, <laughs> such a big, and we it could is, go on about is, this forever. We could go on about it Right, forever. and who knows, maybe there has to be a part two we'll and a part three. probably will have to be a part two and a part three. <laughs> but because Gilgulim are, are, how should I put it? What's a Galgal? Actually, it comes from right. the word Galgal. That's why the world is round. Right. Um, everything must come to its full circle. Right. And it's so funny. It's funny that we're saying that because today, and it's funny that I put this ring on of all. Uh, it's a ring that's it's not, a not quite. It's not quite finished. And it reminds me, you're not quite you're not finished. Quite, very you're close. Good. Very but good. you're not quite. And I actually very got good. this in Spain. Wow. 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 So um, it's, it, it means a lot to me. Yes. It yes. really does mean a lot to me. And it tells me it's a reminder. You're not quite finished. You're right. close. Right. You're not quite right. finished. And right. you put in so much work throughout all the generations. Correct. Let's just finish strong here. Let's Correct. just do it. Not even for reward. At this point, I think it's like, I just love you, Hashem. And if we're coming to the end, I just want to get as close to you. I may not get to David and Melek's no, right. but, <laughs> but I got to get close because I know I'll be very jealous if I don't. So, you know, for, for me, it's about just finishing strong um, because I love Hashem. And, you know, what Hashem has for me to do may change from day to day. And, and then I just try to not get fixated on what my plan is. Right. And just what is Hashem's plan today? Because that really may change. Correct. At any time. Correct. So, um, I want to thank you again so much uh, for taking the time. Of course, of course. <laughs> it is so great. And again, I just want to remind everybody that Hashem was just so gracious yes, in like, bringing us together because yes, he was. we said, let's do the next one live. Yes, you were in Arizona and there was no plan that I knew of that you were right, coming or not right, coming. There was right. no absolute definite that we would see each other, even if you did come. Right. And Hashem made a way for us. Baruch Hashem. Baruch and now the Hashem. next part is just that it's got to be live together in Arizona. In Arizona. <laughs> Yeah. That's in right. Artistral. So Bezrat Hashem. Let, let me tell you, Shem can do anything. But I just, I love him so much because he loves us. Yes. Right? Definitely. Like he loves us. And what we do. Right. And what we do. And I, I want to just add one thing about Gilgulim and Tikkunim because it's interesting that right before you showed up, I was working on a shiul right. that I'm giving tomorrow night right. in New Jersey. And um, r before I came to America, I knew that since I'm going to be staying by a friend, well, I have to have all the material already pretty much mapped out on my computer so I could just put the pieces of the right. puzzle together. <laughs> so, Mamash, before you came, I was still in the middle of working on things and taking from here and putting it here. And I came across a very interesting, um, very interesting midrash that, that and it's, it's actually also a gemara of Berachot that talks about the death of Rabbi Akiva mm. and you know 
he taught Torah in public and he was not allowed to because the Romans decreed right. that Jews should not teach Torah in public but because of his love of Torah and he felt what are you talking about if there's a decree right you know it kind of reminded me like COVID right <laughs> right you I'm can't, like, why you did can't you gather close the together yeshiva? why did you right. close the yeshiva right I remember this coming up. And I can tell the people, but I'll be a Kiva sacrifice his whole life. It's literally. I anyway, know. So, I, yeah. I, so I, this, I know exactly what you're talking about. So that's about. it. So, so the story goes that obviously he, he, he went against the decree of the Roman emperor. And he continued to teach Torah in public because he felt that not teaching Torah would be more detrimental than teaching it and 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 uh, dying as a result rather he should die than the Totora should die out eventually god forbid and Bemeti was captured he was caught and um i mean he only was put to death in right. quite a brutal way right. which we don't have to get into the details and uh, his students are are watching this and the Gemara says that at that moment the Malachim and the Shamaim are also watching how he's dying in the most heinous way, excruciate, right. excruciating and brutal way. And they turn to Hashem, the Malachim, and they, they complain. Is this the reward? And they say, what? Yeah. Zu Torah right. Zu Schara. Is this the reward that, that a, a person gets? This man who Moshe Rabbeinu Allah Shalom said on him mm -hmm. that he would be worthy to give the Torah to right. the Jewish people and not him. Right. And and uh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu's answer is quite astonishing because he says to them like this. He says, "If I hear one more word coming out of your mouth, I am going to have to reverse." the entire world, revert the entire world back to Tohu, Vavohu, Vechoshech al Pene Tehom. Gzera hi lefanai. This is a gzera. So all the Chachamim kind of like, they go haywire with this because he's, what kind of answer is this? Obviously, this is a serious tikkun what just happened over here. And you would never imagine that such a tikkun would happen to such a person of great stature, right. such a righteous man to die like this, especially after having sacrificed himself to teach Torah in public in this way. But the Midrash says that, what does that mean when Hashem said, if I hear another word from you, I'm going to have to revert the world back to Tohu Vavohu. Don't say another word. And Chachamim say, actually, Kadosh Baruch Hu is giving us the secret of Gilgulim and Tikkunim. And even though I'm giving you a, a, a kind of like a, a few minutes of what I'm going to be speaking about it this year, still it ends off on a night, and we can end this in a nice way over here. They give a mashal of this king, a king whose daughter was getting married, and um, he wanted someone to sew for him the most beautiful royal suit right. for the wedding. And uh, somebody told him, you know, there's a Jewish tailor in the center of town who has a reputation for doing very fine work. It was summoned the tailor. And the tailor comes and the king says, I want you to make me the finest, most magnificent royal suit for the wedding to the extent that when I walk my daughter down the aisle, the entire realm will be mesmerized. Yeah. So the Jewish tailor said, Your Majesty, I will be happy to do that for you. And I will not even charge you more than I would anyone else. I just ask one thing, that you provide me with 10 yards of the most beautiful fabric, silk, and I don't know what else he asked for, and the most precious threads so that I could, and the tools that I need in order to create this beautiful suit for you. And he did. The king very happily provided it. Two months later, the Jewish tailor came back to the palace with a mannequin covered, draped in a sheet. He was going to make a big presentation. Right. And everybody's there at the royal court, and the king is very excited to see what this is going to <laughs> What's be. What's this going to be? And... Uh, 
the tailor says to the king, Your Majesty, I worked on this suit for you day and night, toiling away diligently just for you. And he unveils the suit and everybody's oh, wow. Right, right. The king was so impressed by the work. He literally stood up from his throne, came down the steps and started to feel the fabric right. and check, examine the suit. And he realizes, oh, I never saw anything like this in my life. Right. This is a masterpiece, he tells them. Look at the work of this Jewish tailor. And not only that, the integrity of the Jewish tailor that he did not want to charge me more, not even a penny more than what he would charge the average right, person. Right. This is integrity. This is the Jewish people. They're honest people. And he's praising Hashem and the Jewish people. Oh, Kiddush Hashem. But then an anti-Semite who was standing right next to the king and hated this Jew whispers in the king's ear, Your Majesty, you're going to let this man fool you? He's fooling you, you know. He's tricking you and he's cheating you. So the king said, Really? How? He says, What do you mean how? Think about it. He asked you for 10 yards of fabric. How many yards does it take to make a suit? Two? Maybe three? Where's the rest? Where's the extra material? Your Majesty, he stole the rest, kept it for himself in order to make his profit, and pretended to be the biggest tzaddik by telling you, I'm not going to charge you a penny more. Right. But he's fooling you. Right. I want to see, tell him that you want to see the extra yardage. Right. <laughs> and the king started to think about it. says, you know what, he has a point. <laughs> that meant it doesn't take more than two, three yards to make a suit. Right. So he started yelling at the Jew, you Jewish cheat. Everything they say about Jews must be right. You ask for 10 yards, it doesn't take more than three yards to create this suit. Where's the other remaining? You stole, you cheated, right. you, you tried to bamboozle me, <laughs> but I'm not having it. If you don't present the other seven yards, off with your head. So the Jew said, Your Majesty, I don't know what you're talking about. I am telling you that every piece of thread every inch of fabric that you gave me, mm -hmm. all the 10 yards, right. are in that suit. Right. And the king said, that's impossible, it's impossible. And again, he threatened him with death. And finally, the tailor said, your majesty, you leave me no choice. If you cannot believe that, that all of that fabric and all that beautiful thread is in that suit, I have no other choice but to do the following to get his scissors, to get all his tools, and slowly, slowly, he started to unravel the lining, the seams, the cuffs, the lapel, the side seams, one by one, by one, by one, by one. And he laid out the entire fabric across the floor, unraveled everything in order for the king to see. And he says, you tell me, this is 10 yards of fabric mm -hmm. and thread he says, every single piece is in this suit. Say the Chachamim. When a Kadosh Baruch Hu told the Malachim, you're questioning my Gilgul and the right. Tikkunim over here? If you say another word, I am going to have to go back to the beginning of time and unravel the entire creation seam by seam inch by inch thread by thread and lay it all out for you from tohu vavahu v'choshech al tahom for you to understand how this dot is connected to this dot and how this gilgul is connected to that gilgul and why this tikkun was not completed over here and how He's connected to that one, and that one is connected. Right. Is that what you want right. me to do? Would you like me to unravel the entire creation right. so you could understand so you could feel why <laughs> this happened to Rabbi right. Akiva? Right. For that to happen, I would have to bring the whole world right. back to Tohu Vavahu. Right. And that's the answer to Gilgulim and Tikkunim. Only Hashem has the 
map of our lives going back to the beginning of time to that dark abyss that lays out the foundation of what truly is the threading and the stitching and the fabric of our lives and why things happen the way they do and we don't have that vision that Hashem has because we were not here by Choshech. Right. We were not here by Tohu Vavohu. We can't understand. We right. have we have very limited eyesight. We don't have the eyesight of Hashem who is Hayahu Veviye. We don't have that um, the power of sight to be able to see that that far right. back into right. the past so much further into right. the future and even the present that we think we see right. is not always what we think right so that to me when i read that just minutes before you were coming and i was working on it i'm like wow this is like <laughs> this is eye opening this is this is this is the answer to most people's right. lives which is don't ask God to unravel your whole entire life right, and the entire just so creation better, just so you could understand. Right. And love Dafka, I always tell people, love Dafka, even if Hashem unraveled everything right. for you, would you really understand? Right. Because you're not Hashem. Right. So that's, you know, that's I, what I wanted to tell I, you. I don't, I, don't, uh, I, I don't want Hashem to do all that, but all I can say is that I have a feeling it's going to be an amazing dress when it's all over. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just so glad yes. that you and I were two yeah. pearls, I yeah. pray, next to each other yeah. on that dress. So I want to thank you again. We run thank out of time. You. Thank you so much uh, you. For, for sharing, for... Thank always, you. it's always such an amazing time, and I pray. Bezrat Hashem. Here we go, another public plea. Hashem, you heard us the first time. We're together live. In, now we're together in, live in, in Eretz Yisrael. Just like we say in the end of the of the of the seder, right? Like this, we should be in Yerushalayim next Bezrat time. Hashem. So Bezrat Hashem, we hope to see you again soon. That's all for today, and I hope we're all get, uh, together again soon. Bezrat Hashem. Feel good. If you've enjoyed this video or know someone who would, please share it. Siku vote. If you'd like to be notified of upcoming episodes, click subscribe to be notified.